<clears throat> so whatever we have learned so far about dotnet and c sharp one thing for sure we can understand is using this platform we can build some user interface right the kind of user interface we have been building right from day one is more on console application side but dotnet does provide us the user interface to be built as windows interface using windows forms or win forms then there is another rich ui technology provided since dotnet 3.0 that was released in year 2006 named as wpf then we have asp.net web forms We have ASP.NET Razor pages. We do have ASP.NET MVC. OK, then we have some service oriented applications also. So probably WCF, Workflow Foundation, and these days, the most popular one that is web APIs. Right. These three are service oriented applications and these are more on UI. OK. There could be some more options available here. That actually can be used as per the need. But if it is a business application, don't you think the application needs to communicate with some databases? Be it service oriented application or be it UI based application. Do you think the database integration is needed or not? Yes or no? Yes. And what is the need? If we want the application to allow us to do some data entry, that data needs to be held for long, which I will use for further processing maybe for reporting, maybe for creating dashboards. Basically, I need permanent storage. You might say that that can be done with files also, but then the files are more of unstructured data, right? If you're looking for structured data, or maybe semi-structured data, you may require some database. And it's not only about the way how data is stored, it's also about how do we manage the database. So we already spoke about DBMS and RDBMS, and maybe then we have non-relational and unstructured, semi-structured databases also, no SQL databases like that. Advantage we get is with database system in place, we get not only the storage, but the management tools also, replication, mirroring, backup, restore, then distributed data storage. Lot of, lot of features we get there. Security, correct? If we do with files, in that case, everything we have to code. So which will be the matter of efforts and time required, which increases the cost. And if we write the code, there will be maintenance of code also required. Yes or no?
Yes or no? Yes. So that is where the databases are there. But do you feel the application written in .NET or Java is sharing the technology platform with the backend database, which could be some SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, or something else? Are the two technology platforms same or they are different? Different. Even if they are from the same vendor, the technology platforms are different. SQL Server we have seen uses T-SQL language to allow us to interact with it. .NET has got its own set of languages, which are more towards the business logic and all. Nothing to do with the database as such, though there are some packages and libraries with the help of which we can connect to databases, but the database ultimately requires SQL statements. Database won't understand what is .NET, right? Yeah. How this application connects to the backend. This is where .NET came with. ADO.NET library. This ADO.NET was based on providers. Which are called as data providers or database providers to be precise. Which all providers were there? We had SQL Server native client provider. Oracle native client provider. Then we had another provider based on their old technology based on COM. So that provider was named as OLEDB provider. And then there is a universal provider for different types of platforms and technologies. That is Open Database Connectivity Provider, ODBC. Open Database Connectivity. Which one to use when? So if I have SQL Server version 7 or later, say or higher. I can use SQL Server provider, native provider. If I have Oracle version 7 or higher, I use Oracle native client provider. If older versions are there, for SQL Server and Oracle. Or if there is another database type I want to connect with. They have the choice of going to either OLADB provider or ODBC provider. OK. If it is a Windows system, OLEDB provider is used. If it is a non Windows system on which the database is present, ODBC provider is used. Understood? Now, this version 7 of SQL Server and Oracle can also be communicated via ODBC and OLEDB. These two providers support everything. Then why native client providers are there? Any idea? Uh, 
I have an example here. Suppose I develop some issue with my throat. See, my profession is speaking a lot, right? And this throat related issues are quite common for me. If you agree. Yes. Yes. Would I be going to a general physician or would I be going to ENT specialist or more permanent kind of treatment? Whom should I consult? ENT means ear, nose and throat specialist. General physician means who can give medicine for everything. What do you think? What is better option? Yes. Easy, easy question it is. If it's a throat problem and persistent problem, I'm looking for a long term solution. The specialist can help me better, no? Yeah. Because probably this ENT specialist must have studied the medicine for ear, nose, throat issues more than the general physician. General physician probably knows the treatment, but in terms of studies, the specialist has done more study on that. Right? So they can identify the issue more quickly and they can provide me the solution more quickly. Yes or no? If I have an issue with bones, could be anything related to the age, like arthritis and all that is very common, right? Or maybe due to some reason I get a fracture or something. Whom I will go to, general physician or orthopedic? Orthopedic. Orthopedic. Reason? He is specialist. specialist. In that. Right, he knows what to do immediately, looking at the condition, correct? General physician probably will give me the treatment, but most likely it will be hit and trial. It may go well, it may not go well as well. Sometimes it may take time. Because the diagnosis itself will be a challenge, right? The exact problem, what it is, to find out that, General physician will take time. Correct? That's the similar case over here. If I'm looking to work with SQL Server, and if I have a SQL Server native client provider, it will provide me best of the possible solution because it is specialist. It has been designed to work with SQL Server. It will provide me most optimized implementation better performing implementation. Understood? Yes. Whereas OLEDB, ODBC are designed to connect with anyone, any database, any DBMS, any RDBMS. What does it mean? They are not specialist. They have more of generic implementation. So performance wise also probably I'll not get the best of the possible performance with OLEDB and ODBC. Am I right? Yes. So that's how you decide which one to use. Now, beside this, ADO.NET actually provided us two different models to work with the data in the database. One was connected architecture. And the other one was disconnected architecture. What 
What is connected architecture? Connected architecture where the connection remains open once it is opened. Until and unless complete session is over. One, means once I log in, I remain connected. Until and unless I don't log out. Disconnected architecture on the other hand means I log in, for that time I connect. Then I close the connection. Whenever I need to interact with the database, I open the connection, I get the data, I store it in my local client memory and close the connection. I keep on operating with that local copy. And once I'm done with updates, I open the connection and I push all the updates to the database altogether as a batch. And then close the connection again. This way, if I have the database server with limited number of licenses. Disconnected architecture can still allow me to have more number of users connected. Because the connection is not going to stay open for long. Correct. Why this disconnected architecture looks to be more better and more lucrative, but it may not be the case always. It always depends on what type of application you are creating. If it is a real time application that you are working with, like medical domain itself, if I talk about. Live monitoring is going on for a patient. I have to keep the database connection always open. I cannot wait for connection being opened and then data coming and then closing. Right, I need to have live updates. Here the parameter changes, there I need the update. Okay, I cannot keep on accumulating updates in the client machine and then push it together to the database because the doctor may not get intimated immediately. That will be a challenge. Same goes with space technology. A fraction of a second difference in terms of launching the space vehicles also can deviate the space vehicles from the path and can cost millions. Mission may get failed. They need real time accuracy. That's where you have to be always connected. Disconnected architecture is something which can be used where such real time information is not needed. You can work with the cached information or something at any point. Right, like in case of banking application, probably disconnected architecture can suit always. But if I'm having medical or space or say some reservation system, connected architecture is what I would be needing. So that is the reason why Microsoft identified the need for different applications is different. Hence, they came up with two different architectures. Based on the type of applications, based on the need of the applications, developers were required to select which architecture they wanted to follow. Understood? Accordingly, ADO.NET library provided different types of classes and objects. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. One problem, if you study ADO.NET later on in detail, you will find that is applicable for ADO.NET is this, regardless of which architecture you use, you require to write the native SQL statements. which included the queries, which included the call to functions, procedures, cursors and all. OK, what is the problem with that? Problem is not every developer is very, very comfortable with SQL statements. Not every developer is confident enough and expert enough in SQL statements. I'm not talking about SQL Server. I'm just talking about the SQL language. And size equal. Right. In this group also, 
I'm sure there might be few who would agree with me. If I say some of the people may not be very comfortable with database query. Yes or no? They might be very good in business logic. They might be very good in writing the program, the front end. They might be good in designing. Right, the user interface and all. But when it comes to database, they find it very challenging. Yes or no? Even if you are confident, still there would be group of people who are not very confident. You cannot say that this person is a senior uh, professional. That means he is expert in databases, not always. Is it clear? <clears throat> you might think you are writing the good queries, but the database admin comes and says your query is not performing well. It needs to be fine tuned. So when it comes to writing the fine tuned queries, performance tuned queries, that's where the challenges begin, especially when the queries are complex queries based on multiple tables. Yes or no? Suppose if I ask you to write the query which pulls in the data from 15 different tables. What do you think? It will be a simple query or complex one? Tell me quickly. Tell me quickly. It will be a complex one. And then while writing this query, you may not know exactly whether you are writing the correct query or you are writing the query in a correct way or not. Yes or no? It will always be in dilemma. As usually, we are not the people who will be writing the database queries always. Suppose we are more on application development side. Business logic is what our focus area is. For some of us, the design UI might be the focus area. It's obvious that the queries will be, the native queries, native statements will be always a challenge. Right? Technologies usually require practice. And if there is no practice or less amount of practice, 100% it will be challenge. Yes or no? Yes or no? So what can be done? That's question one. Where the need for something other than using this ADO.NET or similar technology comes in. The other area is your application itself. If I talk about. It's written in some object oriented language. Right. It knows objects very well. All logic is written based on objects only. With objects we have understood earlier. That. We can relate to the real world things and that makes our problem statement understanding and the implementation of the solution more easier. Correct or not? Yes. Now, if we say that this application needs to integrate with the concepts like table, view, stored procedure, function, trigger, and the related objects like 
you know, result sets or data sets or something like that. Data sets, record sets, different objects we have in different technologies. Do you think application will be very comfortable communicating with these? And I mean, in terms of coding also, do you think the application would be very comfortable using the code based on database oriented things? With respect to data types also, I am more comfortable with int, char, float, double, string, take time and all. Whereas when it comes to the databases, the data types are completely alien. Where care, small money, money, right? Every database will have its own database, data types. Don't you think that will make the things more challenging? So that is where basically the programs are written in such a way that a class library is written which transforms all this database specific types into into the application specific or business specific objects. In short, I'll say real life objects. And their collections. Understood. So instead of working with employee table, if I'm working with employee collection at the application level, I will be more in more. Uh, Happy to work with it. I'll find it more easy. Employee object is more comfortable to me than employee record. Yes or no? Adding new record to a collection is much more easier than adding a new record to a database table. Yes or no? This class library used to be written by us explicitly. This class library used to be called as data access layer. DAL. What it used to be called as? Data access layer, DAL. Data access layer, DAL. Understood? based on the role it used to perform. So when I'm reading the data from database, data access layer reads the data from the database using the queries and all the native SQL statements, and then transforms it into the application specific objects and collections. So that application comfortably can work with that data. Similarly, when application is trying to send some inserted data or updated data or delete request, it transforms the application specific real life objects to the native queries and then gets the action performed at the database level. Now, suppose if I have 100 tables into my application. I mean, my database for my application. 100 tables are there. What do you think? How many DAL implementations I would need with the conventional approach? Hundred DAL implementations I will need. Understood? Because every table will have different set of data items, no? So the logic for transformation will be different. Hence, for table, I need a DAL. This is minimum. If I'm having some requirement where I need combination data from one or more tables, two or more tables, in that case, there will be separate DALs created for those combinations as well. 
Understood? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, Challenging or easy? It's challenging. Code may be easy, but still, 100 times I need to write that code. See, from my point of view, it's actually a punishment for me as a developer. In school days, you might have actually got such punishments. If you're making some mistake in the spelling, what teacher used to say? Write the spelling 100 times, 200 times, right? Usual practice even today. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now tell me frankly. Ever you felt good writing the same thing 100 times, 200 times, or you felt irritated? Irritated. I'm not the school teacher, so you can tell me frankly. <laughs> it's irritated, right? Yes, sir. And may I know the reason? I know it, but just want to hear it from you. Because after we write it one time, we know it, but they still make one us write time, it. Let's say five times, max ten times. We know it. And after that, we start feeling that what I'm doing. I'm wasting my time, right? Why I'm writing it so many times? I, I already learned it. Yes or no? The moment the feeling comes that, okay, I have learned this now, that moment onwards, it feels irritating. Am I right? Moment may come very first time, may be after 10 repetitions, maybe after 20 repetitions, maybe after 100 repetitions. But sometime that moment will come when you feel confident that, okay, I've learned this. It's no more required to write it again. Correct? Yes. Probably the repetitive stuff. Which I am already expert in is what make us feel irritated in general. Yes. See if your daily routine also becomes stagnant every day, the same routine, same routine, absolutely no change. Every day, get up, have breakfast, go to office. Entire day, walk, walk, and walk. Come back, have dinner, and sleep. Next day, same. Next day, same. Next day, same. 24 by 7, if that is the schedule. What do you think? You will be happy or at some point in time, you will feel irritated. Irritated. And probably that's why we have the concept of weekends, no? So that you can go and do some different things. You can come refreshed. Someone may want to rest. Someone may want to go out. I mean, for some outing or something, someone may want to do shopping, whatever it is, whatever reboots you and refreshes you, you will do that. At least some break from the daily routine. Something different you would be doing so that you go with full energy. Am I right? Yes. Right. So that is the similar reason why people were moving beyond that typical 
style of programming where direct database communication was being done in all the technologies in fact whether it is adio.net in .net or jdbc in java or something similar in some other technology everyone wanted to move away from this monolithic thing 100 tables just because of that i need to write the similar kind of code 100 times just because the structure of the table is different but ultimately i'll still be doing insert update delete operations only select operations only what different i am writing just names of columns not interesting yes or no that is where someone some research was done actually by the programming community programmers community and they came up with a concept called as object relational mapping here ultimately with this transformation that was being done by the dal what we were doing don't you think we were actually relating objects from the application to the relational data in the database this transformation was actually doing this only yes or no they thought that can't we standardize this can't we automate this at such a level that no one is actually required to write the native queries and all people can just keep using the application level objects and there is some mapping happening behind the scenes by the framework which is doing this transformation already for us so we don't need to set up this dal layer in detail in depth explicitly what do you think if that happens it will simplify your job or not will make it interesting or not because the same lengthy work you won't be repeating again and again you will be having more focus on your current applications business logic requirements what do you think yes or no yes so i hope you got the background of or and what it does it does mapping of object and relation relational data with each other very very useful tool when it comes to object oriented programming language we do have some orm tools like microsoft has come up with entity framework in short it is known as ef for dotnet framework it is called as entity framework for dotnet core it is called as ef core there are few basic differences the way how they are configured and used then java has got something called as hibernate which is also an orm framework built for java the team which built hibernate for java has also built an open source framework called as n hibernate for dot net hibernate and n hibernate otherwise are exactly same does that hibernate is designed for working with java n hibernate is designed by the same team but for working with dot net and there are many more like this hundreds and thousands of orms are there depending on your comfort level depending on your project management team decision what orm they want to work with it is decided which orm will be used so usually this decision is taken care of by the architect of the project right based on the skill set of the team they decide that okay we will be using this or we will be using this or we will be using something else understood understood now usually the tools that come natively with the 
main framework are preferred reason there will be no compatibility issues at any point in time and there will be single point of contact required in case if you face any issue if there is a issue in dotnet you can reach microsoft if there is a if there is an issue in uh, entity framework you can still reach microsoft only if you are using an ibernate in that case microsoft will not help you with the issues with an ibernate they will ask you to go to the an ibernate community for the help with an ibernate so that's where most of the time the native providers are preferred i said most of the time not all the time understood so here we are going to talk about ef4 here we also need to understand what all an orm what all qualities an orm qualities or facilities an orm should provide so the first thing that we look for from orm is the orm itself object relational mapping the transformations and all whatever required should be taken care of by this it should provide me crud operations automated crud means create retrieve update delete so insert select update and delete operations basically are usually called as crud third thing that i require is self tracking means if data is changed how it is updated in the subscriber application or vice versa if data is changed by the subscriber application how it is changed within the database change notifications i need the support for i need another feature called as persistence ignorance what is that persistence means storage of the data in permanent manner that is persistence ignorance means i don't care where and how it is getting stored so basically the dependency on provider should not be there i need provider but one specific provider is not what should be followed it should be configurable depending on the client's need i should be able to pick up any provider in the back end and i should be able to use it without changing my core code written in the orm ef core basically has got the support for all of these understood one more important point is it should be simple to use which ef core is understood understood yes right so here i'll just put a requirement today what exactly we are going to see with ef core example which we will be building tomorrow morning i am looking for a simple console application which deals with a backend database created in sql server where i am looking for a database named as company db this company db database needs to have a table called as departments we did created a table similar to this right departments which had department number as primary key department name as not null correct with respective data types being used like department number was end d name was in varcar 50 then we had location which was just in varcar 50 no validation as such on it yes this is the table i want to be connected to console application 
where console application should have feature for reading all departments i mean all records reading department by department number adding new department updating existing department what can be updated name of department if written incorrectly or needs to be renamed or location needs to be changed right these are updates and then deleting existing department by department this is the requirement and it all should be menu driven enter 1 for this enter 2 for this enter 3 for this something like that understood take a snapshot of the screen and paste it in chat box save it at your end as well as we are going to need this as a reference tomorrow where we actually will see the implementation same thing we will be repeating with the mvc application as well do you get it do you get it please take a snapshot put it in chat okay now for today there is one small request please go and read something on entity framework core precisely do some of your own research i am not sharing any link as of now it is supposed to be done entirely by you search for entity framework core and focus on the official documentation from microsoft give preference to microsoft documentation because it will be the most up to date documentation you might find lots of articles here and there but some of the articles may be targeting older versions so there you may get some confusing inputs as well right so if you refer the microsoft documentation it will be the most up to date one okay it will help you understand exactly how the implementation goes ahead in tomorrow session is that fine with all yes sir yes okay so that is it for today we learned quite interesting features today some of them were quite advanced as well and tomorrow session will be more on more advanced features we are going to actually learn this entity framework core along with asp.net mvc and web apis as well clear yeah. yes sir so read little bit on mvc design pattern and asp.net mvc framework as well along with entity framework core right at least the theoretical concepts if you come prepared with terminology if you are aware of it will be easy for you to so grasp what i am going to show you tomorrow here yeah? 
Okay, sir. Okay, so that is it for today. See you tomorrow at 9.30 a.m.